Hello, my name is Raven Knight, and this is a tutorial to show you how to add functionality to your UDK level that will allow the player to pick up an object from one location, move it to another, and then drop it there. I'll give you a short demonstration of what the level will be like when we're finished. So you see, there's the object. You can walk right up to it. Push the Use key. I'm not close enough and then carry it somewhere else. Push the use key again and I've dropped it. So let's get to making this. First thing I'm going to start a new level. I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to start a new level using Midday Lighting Template. You can use whichever one you prefer. Okay, I'm going to ignore this box. We don't need it, but it won't be getting in the way. I'm going to turn to a different direction. And the first thing we need is an object for the player to move. So for this, we're going to go up to the content browser. Now, I'm not a fan of plain white surfaces, so I'm going to highlight materials for my filter. And just for since it's a ground, I'm going to put in a search term of dirt. Now, I'm going to drag MUN Terrain Dirt 04 onto the platform and just drop it. And that will give the platform a dirt texture. So now, instead of materials, select Static Meshes as your filter. And up for the search term, you'll want Box. Now, I'm going to use SLT Mech. SM Crate Box 02A. I'm going to drag that onto the world. And there it is. Now you can close the content browser. Now this object is a bit big. So down here in the lower right, you've got four ones, and these are the draw scales. The first one will change it uniformly, uniformly change the size. So I'm going to make it about half its usual size. Change this one to 0.5 that will make it a little more manageable. And also I'm going to use this widget to lift it up a little bit so it's a little closer to the player's line of sight. Now, a static mesh cannot be moved. So we're going to have to right click on the static mesh and come down here to convert and over on this next menu convert static mesh actor to mover click that. And now it is ready to be moved. Now the next thing we need is a trigger. This is what the player will activate in order to pick up or drop the object. Right click near the object, come down to Add Actor. Near the bottom of this next menu is Add Trigger. Click that and it will drop a trigger there. We need to adjust the trigger a bit, so double click on the trigger and you'll bring up its properties. Under the trigger heading, under cylinder component, you'll see collision height and collision radius. We want to change the collision height to say 90 and the collision radius, I'm going to put 256. That way the player won't have any trouble activating it. Now I'm going to use this widget to pull the trigger up so that the top is sticking out of the object. I'm holding the right mouse button and using the WASD keys to maneuver around the scene to make sure the trigger is lined up with the object. If you need it, Q is down and E is up. I'm going to get these aligned and there we go. Now we're ready to add Kismet code. So up here on the top menu, right next to the content browser, you'll find a green K. Open Unreal Kismet. Click that. And you'll get this new screen that's got properties and sequences on the bottom and a large gray area up above. You need to right click somewhere in that gray area. You want a new event using trigger zero. We want it to be a used event, because this is what will happen when the player 
activates it with the use key. And just so that we don't forget, down here under max trigger count, it's under sequence event. We need to change this one to a zero. That way the player can use it as many times as they want. If you want to limit the number of times they can move the object, you can make it any even number you want, like two, four, six, eight. If it's an odd number, then the last time they pick it up, they won't be able to drop it. Okay, now it's going to have to initialize a bit. So we're going to right click up above trigger used. We need a new event and we want level loaded. Is this has to happen first before anything else. Now if you hold control, you can use the left mouse button to move these around on your screen where you prefer them. When the level is first loaded, it's going to have to attach the trigger to the box. That way when the player picks up the box and moves it, the trigger will come along for the ride. So right click out to the right of level loaded, go to new action, actor, and attach to actor and click that. Now you can connect the loaded and visible slot to the in slot. Now the attachment is the trigger that you should still have selected. So right click down below attachment and go down to new object variable using trigger zero and click that. It will give you this circle here, attach the attachment slot to it. The target is the box. You're attaching the trigger to the box. So back in your scene, go ahead and select the box and then come back to Kismet and right click under target. This will have now changed to new object variable using interp actor. So click that and connect the target slot to it. And this is all it needs to do to initialize. So now we go down to trigger used. Since the same trigger is used to either pick up or drop the object, we need a variable to keep track of whether or not the player is currently carrying the object. So right click somewhere out here to the left of trigger used, go for a new variable, and we want a boolean. All we need is true or false. It initializes to false, which is what we want, since the player is not carrying it at the beginning. Now, down under sequence variable, you'll find a var name, and it will say none. You need to give it a name. I'm going to call mine is carrying. And now we can continue with our code. When they click, when they activate the trigger, the first thing it's going to do is check to see if they're carrying the object or not. So right click off to the right side of trigger used. We want a new condition, we want a comparison, and we're comparing booleans. Connect the use slot to the in slot. The boolean we're comparing is your is carrying variable. We're going to have to add a named variable to refer to that. So down under boolean, right click, we want new variable. Then down at the bottom of this list, you'll find named variables in persistent level. That's going to give you a list of all the variables you've named in this level. Of course, right now there's only one, so click that one. And then connect the boolean slot to it. You'll see that there's a green check in it indicating that it has successfully linked up to the variable. Get that out of the way. You don't need to use result. That's not relevant here. So now, if the player is not carrying the object, they're going to pick it up. So to do that, right click, new action, actor, attach to actor, connect false to the in slot. 
Now the attachment is the box, which you should still have selected. So right click under attachment, come down to new object variable using interp actor, and connect attachment slot to that. The target is the player. You're attaching it to the player. So right click under target, go down to new variable, go down to player, and then select a player variable. It will default to all players, so down under SEQ variable player, you're going to untick the all players box. That way it will resort to player zero. Now connect target to that. Now you need to tell is carrying that the player is now holding the object. So right click out to the right of attached to actor. I'm on a new action. I want to set a variable and we're setting a boolean. The boolean you're setting is your is carrying variable. I'm going to drag that down here so it's easier to get to. And that's the target. So connect the target to your is carrying. The value is true. So right click under value, go to new variable, a boolean, and it defaults to false. So down under seq var boolean, you're going to change the b value to 1 for true. And then connect value to that. And don't forget to connect your out slot from attached to actor to the in slot of the boolean. And that is it for picking the object up. So when the user clicks the trigger, select activates the trigger again, excuse me, when the player activates the trigger again, it's going to come out true that they are holding it and now want to drop it. So we need another attached to actor. So right click, new action actor, attach to actor, connect your true to this one. The target is still player zero, so connect it, you can use the same player zero. The attachment is still the box, connect it. Now highlight this attach to actor. And down here under SEQ attach to actor, there'll be a label detach. You need to make sure that one is checked way they will drop the object. And then you need to tell is carrying that they are no longer carrying the object. So right click out to the right side of attached actor, new action, set variable, boolean, and connect the out of attached actor to the in of the boolean. The target is once again is carrying and the value is going to be false. So right click down here below value, new variable, boolean, and it will default to false. And connect value to false. And using the mouse wheel to pull out a little bit, this is your full kismet set for this level. You can close your kismet now. I'm going to build the level and show you the result. I'm going to pause the video while it's building because it tends to take quite a while. Okay, now that it is done building, we can test the level. And there's the object over there. We just walk right up to it, push the use key, and we're carrying it move it to a new place, push the use key again, and we've dropped it. And that is the end of this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching.